mm. type of uh, shop, mm. you know, because that's when I started first in the boot game. In fact, you'll see a little photograph down just there. And that's where I first started in the boot game there, just in the old Smithfield market, about 1960. And that when Halls was on the go? Yes, Harry Hall, Eric Hall. He traded on the name of Harry Hall. And uh, it seems like yesterday when I went as a boy. And uh, I'll never forget the Seaman Strike was on at the time. And uh, I went in and I remember looking at <coughs> this. There's about 20 times the size of this little shop in all these books, you know, and they're always interesting books. And I remember saying to him, you know, is there any chance of doing what you're doing? And he said, well, there is a bit of a chance, you know, and I wasn't intentional at that time, but mm -hmm. so I was to work for him for about 13 years, and then I went on a road for a publishing firm, and all you were meeting was people like myself, eccentric. What? <laughs> say you are eccentric. Well, not whatever you want, you know. <laughs> you know? But you've always got a, an interest in books. Oh, God, I, from as a boy. See, my father, like, when you look back over different periods in time, and especially in the 50s, there wasn't a big lot of local history stuff done there, even in terms of history. You have to get the feeling of the time. Uh, there wasn't a lot of history books in Belfast, or even Ireland as a whole. My dad used to bring them home from the United States. You know, a lot of the books that were still in print there, and thank God over a period of time, which I tried to uh, cater for in here, is a lot of the cross-community books. You know, people that, you know, such as local authors, mm. stuff has been published, especially by the uh, by the people of Belfast. That's really what your bookshop excels itself in, especially second-hand bookshops. You, yeah. Well, you're not second-hand, but you're doing new, but, new books uh, as well. Oh, but doing new books, you, yeah. It's, it's community-based. Oh, it's as compared with, it's with for the people of Belfast. Yeah, compared with Dylan's you know, or Easton's. Because they're the diamonds. Oh, aye. Oh, well, a lot of them, kid, I'm not going to say for the London market, they're wonderful mm -hmm. shops, but you see, a lot of people sometimes they don't realise the feeling of the people of Belfast. They like their little westerns, they like their little, you know, Mills and Boons, their little romances. Well, just behind you here, for instance, you've got, uh, there's the history of the falls. Yes, yes. And, um, uh, uh, yeah, and, uh, and, and especially this little Belfast magazine, it's, uh, it's we local, you know, a uh, uh, local. And then, of course, we'll have our friend Albert. Who's, who's, who's in the shop here who's at the moment. We'll have the a moment. word with him in a second. And, uh, and the wonderful thing that I discovered for Albert, I remember when he first published his li one of his little books, Enjoy the Crack, and that was that little one there at that particular time. And the whole idea, it was a charity-based thing. You know, a lot of proceeds went to the Chess Heart and Stroke mm -hmm. organisation. Mm -hmm. And when Albert come down with it at that time, I says, well, bring me a hundred copies down, because I know what the people of Belfast go for. Mm -hmm. It was the old poetry and written in the old, you know, we would call it the old Belfast lingo. And what I just simply done uh, over this period from '92, I've sold thousands of it. Like what I've found, and this is what, like, well, no, what this is say with the benefit of hindsight. I've been a lifetime in this business. Now the people who come into me as children mm -hmm. come in here with their children today, mm -hmm. and this is what I've found. You know, mm -hmm. people are more into their local areas now. It's more community aware. You've got uh, newspapers out like the, Sh uh, the Shankill Mirror, which yes, yes, about yes. It, uh, when I, I carry that, usually I have one of lads in Shankill bring me because a lot of people <coughs> who can't get up to Shankill who live in our areas, mm -hmm. and that's a community based paper, mm -hmm. you know. And, and then from that you have publications. Uh, oh, you have, such, such as like, you know, Glen Ravel Press, they publish a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. and they handle most of their stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, the little Belfast magazine. Mm -hmm. Well, you what's know? your busiest time of the year, John? A lot of people would say, is it, is it Christmas? You know, I could get more of a ton sometime of wedding. Now, traditionally in the old Smithfield, Saturday was the busiest day. Because yeah. the attraction of the old Smithfield was, it was a covered market. How has it changed uh, over the years? They had the big fire in the 70s. and 1974, May 74, it went down. It was so sad. In fact, I know people who cried, including myself, when, like, when it went down. Mm -hmm. Because there was such a variety of uh, shops in it, reckless shops. And it was a feeling that, you know, the only way I could describe it, I believe this shop has a wee bit of soul. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, and I don't, I'm not taking anything away from the bigger shops, but some of them are soulless. To me, this is not a job, and never will be. It's a way of life. Mm -hmm. It has become that way over this last period of 30 plus years. You know, but I mean, say 40, you, you sell books for every every uh, pursuit in life. Oh, every pursuit. I'm what you call a general bookseller, mm -hmm. and if I haven't got it, I'll do my best to get it free. You know. Uh, who, who, who's your main? Who would be your main customers? Oh, come on, as you can, you know, like they're such diverse. You know, they they come from so many different walks of life. I would have little women who come in here every Tuesday and get their little mills and boons. I would have them come in Tuesday and read detective magazines. Mm -hmm. Community based again, because mm -hmm. the reason being, when you're selling at a greatly reduced price. Mm -hmm. It's also helping, you know, people who... Mm -hmm. See, the average price of a book now, when you look at the average price of a, an ordinary paperback now, it's about a maybe eight ninety nine yeah. a tenner, mm -hmm. which means you can come in to me and they can pick up books from as little as a pound mm -hmm. up, you know? Mm -hmm. you know? But you get... Uh, also, you've got your, your researchers calling in. Oh, you do, yeah. Political yeah. researchers. Oh, political students, researchers. One students. shop in Young Lad, there, he's actually one of the, uh, Queen's University. Okay, you would have everybody coming in here. Because, you say, it's like society. I deal with society, how would you say? There could be 
you know, plasters, plumbers, mm-hmm. you know, uh, literary men, authors, you know. Looking around, you, you must have had books here when, uh, for years. Um, you, you've obviously had them. Um, for instance, I can see up there you have uh, old um, reference books. And Oh, they would be for my own reference. A lot of that mm-hmm. stuff that I would hang up there, you know, because sometimes people would come in, they're looking for an author, they're looking for a publisher, they're mm-hmm. looking for the IBS number. Mm-hmm. So they're not for sale? No, they're not for no. sale, only for my mm-hmm. reference. Just happen to be at some space that they're big enough you can put them in mm-hmm. out of the way, like, you know, mm-hmm. without sitting on the floor, you know. But you get so many people sometimes come in, they're looking for a particular author. And the way a lot of these big companies use now, it's all computers. Mm-hmm. The only computer I have is between my ears. Yeah, ears. Sometimes it works. That's probably uh, the best one, John. Well, I don't know about that there. Sometimes it's not working, like, you know, sometimes it breaks down. If I'm overtired <laughs> or, or what have you, <clears> I, uh, <throat> it would sort of way collapse on me, you know, but I'm saying that, darling. But what I've found in here, John, and over a period of time, just like yourself before, you know, you'd have come in and think you had travels, you know? Mm-hmm. So the way my head works, now I say I have a couple in front of you, Addy Havlin was in yesterday, the key man, and he showed me a few travel books. I just got him, I'll show them to John next time he's in, because you're interested in that field. Mm-hmm. I love placing books with people who are interested mm-hmm. in a particular subject matter, a particular book. Mm-hmm. Like was a lad in this morning, he'd been looking for a wee copy of Confessional. Lord, he wee work effects, and been in print now about 15 years, and I had a wee copy for him. Now, do you see that wee smile? Maybe been only 150 spent, mm-hmm. but do you see that wee smile? That somebody cares, that somebody has remembered that I was looking mm. for that particular book. Well, so that's, that's part of the community well, service. What, yeah. I would look at it anyway. Well, that's what they say about all these big stores these days. You're just really a number and uh, just a number. they take your money and big give you the book and that's it. 1984 overall. But I suppose it's nice to know to be recognised or, you know, in that sense. Just like if I go somewhere, what about you, Johnny? Keep no right. You know, that type of thing. It oh, it's that wee bit of soul, I think, you know. So I think that this wee shop, I'm not going to say, most second-hand bookshops, I think, have a soul, mm. you know. You know, most of them have a soul. Oh, it's amazing the diverse cards you made over the years. and uh, But but Smithfield attracted those sort of people, didn't it? Well, I mean, they were, and it also attracted, uh, especially during the Troubles, people felt no, safe see, coming into Smithfield. They did, that's right. See, at that particular time, unfortunately, what the Troubles are, you had people maybe who lived up a shangle, people in the falls who worked together, maybe it parted because of the divisions in society and things like that there. And they met around the Smithfield area mm-hmm. to go and have a drink or have lunch or go and have a wee bet. Mm-hmm. And this is what, you know, and, and this mm-hmm. is what always oh, a Smithfield area. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say it was neutral ground, that would be wrong. No. You know, put nothing. But they felt comfortable, mm-hmm. you know. But I always remember James Young. Oh, Jimmy Young. I remember yeah, him coming around the old Smithfield. He came around Smithfield, but he used to take, take Smithfield off in his sketches, he didn't did. he? I remember that. I remember coming take, around dressed up, you know. Uh, and the woman with the black shawl. And, yeah, and he used to take, but he used to take off both sides. You know, and I think it was one of the old actresses at that time. And I remember coming up and saying, oh, hello, darling, how you doing? Oh, I wasn't in the uni for your coat. <laughs> you know, I wasn't in the uni for your coat. But when you say, when you look over different periods of time, not only the people you meet, but the, uh, the only way I look at whether somebody comes in here and spends a pound or whether they spend a thousand pound, mm. I think I would still, you know, it wouldn't be, like, there's no difference. Mm. You've just arrived in, Albert. Just arrived, John. I have some books for you here, John. Be now, lovely, Albert. Yeah, it's a wee book I've put out recently. Oh, lovely. And I'm going to read one of the wee oh, poems to you, all right? Be to give you an Albert. idea what it is. What's oh, the... What's the uh, that's it there, Witten Wisdom. Witten Wisdom. Mm-hmm. And this is this all poetry? Yes, oh. yes, yes. And this is from the the where, where's this all uh, based well, on? Sometimes it comes out of my head. Could be about anything. Mm-hmm. It could be local stuff. It could be something I made up. Mm-hmm. Or you could tell me a yarn and I make a poem. Out of right. It. We once said this, doctor. You know I'm eighty two, and I'm not enjoying sex anymore. Could you tell me something I could do? Well, said the doctor, you're getting on a bit. I'm sure you've had an eventful life, but there's one thing I'd like to know. What age is your little wife? Well, the wee man said to the doctor, although we used to enjoy it fine, I don't see why it should change for us. The wife's only 79. 82 and 79, said the doctor, and the two of you can't enjoy your sex. Do you not think it's about time you forgot about it and sat, up, sat around to relax? And the doctor thought to himself as he saw the wee man in tears, 82 and 99, they probably haven't had sex for years. By the way, said the doctor of the couple, when did you discover the sexual strain? Twice last night, said the love boards, and twice this morning again. <laughs> Very good. I have a lot of wee women who would send their wee parcels to the States. Now, any of Albert's stuff is part of that parcel. Now, they could send them very, very expensive presents and things like that mm-hmm. there. But what always comes out top of the heap is Albert's poems, mm. because it's to do with the old Belfast, and people 
of that age group, mm. you know. Yes, that's right. I know you're slightly older than I am, uh, but like I'm only a young fella. <laughs> and John, <laughs> John's telling it to us. People say to me, Albert, I want book number three, but because our Jenny hasn't got it yet in Canada, our Jenny hasn't got it in Manchester. Mm. And they just travel everywhere. They just go everywhere. So it's John Clancy Books International, isn't it? Well, it could be well, book. Oh, well, yes, if you want to put it that way, all right. Let's put all right. it this way. I would you call Albert's <laughs> chief supplier. <laughs> Although in Santa, they do sell a lot of Shanka. Yes. Yeah, a lot of little cans, yes. you know, yes. different yes. people yes. like that there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. the fact of me being in the centre of town, mm-hmm. it's handy for the people coming in. Yes. You know, and over this last, what, 12, 13 years, 13 Albert? Years, mm-hmm. like that, yeah. Because Albert at that time, it's fact, he came in to me before he wrote that one. says, look, like, I've already done four copies of um, Enjoy the Crack. But there's always that demand because it's locally based and it goes across all the vibes. How many books have you, have you put together over the Don't years? Don't you me. remember? Well, actually, individual books, well, maybe I've published eight and nine. Mm-hmm. But how many copies of each? Mm-hmm. I order maybe 200 at a time. Mm-hmm. And they might last a few weeks, they might last a couple of months, you know. You know at diff- and there's so many people come. When are you doing another book? When are you doing? They've already read them all and want more. Port, I like to call them the Belfast Port. Because this type of port that he writes goes across but covers all, everybody. Covers all does, the base, yeah. you know. And I can talk to everybody. I've been to a community centre in the Glen Road. I've been down to the Stars Community Centre talking. So you know, port to people. It doesn't annoy me. So this word cross community is not new to you, anyway? No, it's not new to me. No, 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 no. He's been doing it from the second. <laughs> in, in my time, because I've known Albert now over 40 years, so oh, it's not been done. Mm-hmm. In fact, he's looking for a book. It's called The Wandering Jew, My Last two, 2000 Years. He my bought a copy of Very Call, and um, I think it was the late 60s. Now, I, I don't think I'd sold it to him, no. but he, he, he had passed it on to somebody. No, do you know and what happened? Trying, to, no. I found out there now through the sun. I, yeah, I remembered what happened. At this time, I'd only starting to read. Mm-hmm. Burks. Right. And I was living in a wee two bedroom house at the time mm-hmm. on the old Lodge Road. There was no room in the house for the kids hardly to run about. But at these old books gathered up and I had them on top of shelves and below cover at them everywhere. And a day like that one day the wife was in bad temper. She trying to tidy up and no matter where she went through the books. I just said to me, get them bloody books out of the room, give me a better room here. And I would have got two of my mates and got three cared bird boxes and I dumped them all into them and we carried them down to Uber and other place. That's right, Inspector. And I just threw them in the middle of the floor. I says, our John, take him. He says, what do you want for him? So I want them or I want rid of them. And that was me. I wouldn't buy a book off that. But I still start cap writing. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just got into more than writing poetry and published it myself, my own stuff. Mm-hmm. So and then only but you specialised in getting other books on local history, Yes, Albert? I did. Oh, yeah. yes, yes. Uh-huh. How, did you got, how did you start in, into this, Albert? You did, well, did you have any formal formal, formal indi- education in this, or you no. just sort of came no, naturally? I never, I no, I was just trailed up in the public elementary school in the middle of the Hummer. <laughs> no, I was never. You must have been top of the class. I don't I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember like about me, that part. Of it. Well, well, the first well, poem I wrote was an oil rig. Was on sorry, what was it again? On an oil rig. On an oil rig? Yes, he used to work on the oil rigs. Right. He used to come back and forth work contract work. Mm. And I, I can remember I had a Scotch fellow working with me as a helper. I'm a fitter, yes, I was a fitter. Mm-hmm. He was my helper. He was going away for the weekend. And he got into a bit of bother. I can't tell you what it was, but he got into a bit of bother. And when he came back to the job Monday, he was, oh, God, he was, dis- he was really ter- terrified. Mm-hmm. And I said, what happened? And he told me, I says, poo bad, John. But there's a bit of humour attached to it. And I sat down that night in my room. I wrote this poem about it in rhyme. But I'd never wrote anything like that before, anything at all. And I just, the next morning, I hand that round the job. And I was going around the job and all laughing. And they knew what had happened, John had told him, but John took it in good sport. Like. And then after that, when I was working, if anybody had broke anything, I lost something or done something stupid, they'd come over to me, hear about old Sammy, read something about him. So I started <laughs> reading about all the boys. And, and then when I come home, I start writing at home about my school days, football days, work dead to everything. And about the district, about relatives, about a different thing. But I wasn't thinking, I was just throwing them in their box. I'll tell all the yarns, mm-hmm. good and bad. I do a little bit of serious uh, writing, local history, and uh, a little bit of this kind of stuff, mm-hmm. local uh, programs and but, stuff. Uh, uh, you've, uh, you've, you've got, uh, you brought a couple of books along here. And yes. One is uh, Standing Room Only, uh, James Doherty. Memories of Belfast, Belfast cinemas. cinemas, and I was just flicking through it there, Jimmy, and I noticed 
the old cinema there, the Alhambra. Which, what page was it on again now? It's 20, 26, I think it is. Uh, that, that cinema, I mean, it's, it's still... People still talk about it to this day, yeah, and it has a lot of history to it, and some of the some of the people that visited to it, and tell us something about it. And well, the Alhambra itself was an old a theatre, mm-hmm. uh, really set up <laughs> by an old uh, London uh, song and dance man, mm-hmm. Willie John Icecraft. Now he'd been uh, engaged in the old Fordville stuff, and when he took over this uh, Alhambra. Of course, he had his. Uh, he knew all who was who mm-hmm. in in the Fodville world. Well, this, was, this was in the twenties. Uh, oh, even in the in the eighties. In, in the eighties, way. In, 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 in the eighties, yes. Uh, the pictures hadn't been really shown, but mm-hmm. the the Alhambra hadn't really made its name mm-hmm. away back in the early, in the late eighties. Mm-hmm. So, um, real top liners. Charlie Chapman, Charles Colburn, uh, George Farnby's father. Mm. We all know about George mm. Farnby with his ukulele, but his father had been an old uh, stage hand before George came up. So really the all the stars of the early 90s and the, the late 18 and 90s and the early 1900s all appeared in the Alhambra. Mm-hmm. Then, of course, <coughs> in around about 18 and 96, uh, some French ph- photographers, two brothers, invented the moving picture. Prior to that, we were only uh, given a still. Mm-hmm. Uh, they called that the magic lantern. Mm-hmm. You put a slide, and the fact that you could produce an image on a screen was magic Mm -hmm. to people and we would have went even and watched stills at theatres. So the Frenchman, he invented the moving cinema and shortly after it was shown in Paris, one of the strange things, one of the first showings for experimental purposes was the Empire. The old empire down in Victoria Square, Victoria Square, where you hear so much talk now about they're going to redevelop it. Actually, the empire won't come back because Little Words was built on the site of the empire, an imposing place. Now, one of the, the three tier places, you had the gods, mm. and again, just like the way you hear the, the repertoire and the chanting from the galleries, and of course, the, a lot of the comedians didn't pick on the people in the front, mm. they actually appealed to the, to the gods, Spitalist. as they called it. That's where they got their mm. name. Uh, the more bantering they got from the gods, the, the happier uh, they felt. But the empire, at any rate, uh, experimented with the first film. It was only seven minutes, show. Only seven minutes? Seven minutes. Mm. It was just part of the, the usual evening repertoire. So it was... It called the, the, the film The Coming of the Train. Now, it wasn't in the 3D, as we call it now, that can actually give you an image of the movement of a thing, but it was new to the people. And it wasn't uh, a working class uh, people who had been uh, superstitious uh, people who had been invited. They were mostly intellectuals who were invited that to that particular showing. But when the train was coming, and movement from the screen. They thought it was going to crash into the, right. and they panicked mm-hmm. and, and ran out. But irrespective... Because they still show that to this day. I've uh, seen it's that, and it is time. quite... Uh, it's good, yeah. good for the time. Mm-hmm. You would think it was mm-hmm. going to leave the... Mm-hmm. Well, that's the history of Belfast and the coming of the train. Mm-hmm. And it was shown here in, that's fascinating. in, in Belfast. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, the it, apart from that scare that night, uh, the whole thing took on. And we have picture houses springing up all over uh, the city. And the theatres, a lot of them that had depended on the theatres, they were, they, they turned picture houses too, including the one that we just up. And, 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 and Champlin had, had, uh, had been there. Oh, he had been there. So then some of his pictures were being shown 
in Do you ever remember seeing him, Jimmy? No, no, he had been before my time. I, I was a great, uh, well, we were all great uh, fans of his, but for his presence, it was before my time. I, I'm 84 now, but still... I still, 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 you're not that old. <laughs> still a boy. I, 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 I'm still a boy. And, uh, and the, the, the picture houses, uh, they grew. And they spread out. Well, did you think Belfast had uh, a bit more buzz in those days? Um, well, maybe not so much buzz, it, but... It, uh, was, it was restricted. You, you kept to your own areas. And the uh, the picture house people, or the people who developed the picture houses, recognised that. You see, we didn't have the transport. Cars were... Well, you could have practically uh, laid down in Royal Avenue there, mm-hmm. and you'd have been safe. A bookshop, community centre, social club. Well, you, you name it. You name it. A crack. Cafe. And a very good bookshop. <laughs> well, bookshop just part of it, but like, but without them, sure, what would you do? Mm-hmm. You know, I remember one time somebody had wanted me, it was a job going in the library or something like that there, and they were offering big bucks at that time. I think it was about 30k a year or something like that. I was probably capable or more than capable of doing the job, but it wouldn't be me, mm-hmm. you know, that type of thing. But you know? <laughs> Do you think that uh, do you think there'll ever be a day when, with all this internet and uh, electronic stuff, and uh, will we ever see a day when we don't ever have books that people will be reading off a screen or something like that? Would you believe per head per copy the people of Belfast are the best readers in Great Britain as a whole? That's been done through surveys, been done through different things. In fact, if I went into a house, and I think I've mentioned this before down the lane in our one-to-one conversations, which you would call yourself if you were looking for a book, or I was to say, if I haven't got it, I'll point you in the right direction. But what I've found very, very, very simple. No, I, I, I can't imagine Belfast without bookshops, and especially second-hand bookshops. Do you think it's because it's probably a lot of it's the community spirit as well? People are looking at always looking at history issues, local issues. Of course, in the way we're conditioned from our kids, we'll have a good community, you know, you know, and I was lucky enough to be born in an area such as my shop, they come from all diverse, you know, mm-hmm. of society, mm-hmm. know, know the melting pot, and they all meet here. Mm-hmm. In fact, there was a little book that I think I mentioned to you, or I must show you, did I, uh, did I show you them? Hold mm-hmm. on, i get them. <coughs> Just give us a second or two to we get John's book here. <laughs> no, no, this is the first. This is the first one we Christmas boxes, and it's amazing to both of them came in the one day. So these are these are. Uh, <laughs> no, right. I'm not say this is one from uh, Gusty Spence, his son brought it down to me to mm-hmm. John. But respect, regards, and sincere good wishes, your friend Gusty. And this one came up from Rory O'Broadry from Dublin. And it just says to John Clancy, with reflection in Gord County Galway. I used to be in drama at one time, John. We we're putting a little play and happened to be in having a cup of coffee. And this gentleman, whom at that time I recognised his face but couldn't put a name. Mm. And at that time I think he was president of Sinn Fein, Rory O'Broadry. Rory Brady, yes. You know, so goodness, isn't that nice? Now there's what you end, call. Both ends of the political spectrum. Well, political, yeah. and, and, and I'm sure the two men could sit down, knowing both of them, mm-hmm. have a cup of tea and a bit of a yarn. Mm-hmm. The same as I would have the met in here. It's not just selling books. <laughs> oh, There's no, an awful lot more to it. No, there's a lot more to it than that there, and especially the people that have met and, and, and continue to meet. Mm-hmm. I'm a great believer in the sense that a lot of people who would come down to it, they would help me for sometimes before at the bigger bookshops, as Joe said, maybe from a budget point of view. Mm-hmm. You know, I would be inclined to look after the customers. Like there's even new stuff I would handle. Now I would give them a slight dip, but we would be cutting into my profit. Mm-hmm. I would rather sell a thousand of Jimmy Dockery's books mm-hmm. at, say, 7.95 instead of 8.50. And sell tr- thirty copies at eight ninety five. So you have it in turnover. Some of these research books. I mean, some of them are one hundred, hundred and fifty pounds oh a God piece. Oh that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's and true. if you're a, stu- if you're a specialist. yeah, if you're a student, you're on a on a on a tight you income. An example of that. There was a lady one time. She was doing a course in, uh, on, on political history, and I know she was a student, and she was taking things rough. And I'll never forget saying to her at that particular time, she bought. I think it was a biography of John Hume, a biography of Big Ian Page. No things like that. She was doing that particular. You know, uh, you know, uh, uh, on, on, on local history. And I said there, look, I tell you what, love, I give him for X number of pounds, provide him one thing, once you get your degree, and once you get into work, you come down and spend a few pounds. A couple of years later, comes back and spent 100 quid. And I don't think she wanted the books, mm-hmm. but because of the fact that I passed them on to her right. at a price she could afford. Mm-hmm. You know? So, John, you're not going to uh, take early retirement or anything like that? Well, as we say, and uh, for an old friend of my own there, Joe Montgomery, who was a lifetime in this area. In fact, I have a wee article in this latest edition, which I'm waiting on a Belfast magazine. Joe Montgomery was the old pet store man here. Yes, he I remember. 60 that. years, and he passed away there on October. Mm-hmm. Passed there, and uh, 
as we put it in the sense, was Smithfield men. I would like to always look upon myself as a feet first job. You don't retire. Mm-hmm.